Wingy Boxing, IFL TV, in association with MTK Global. Here with a big man, David Price. Just got the win over Tom Little. How do you feel? Feel good, feel happy. Back on the winning trail. I've missed this feeling all day. I weren't really thinking about the fight. I was thinking, looking forward to the, the feeling after the fight and now this year. What, what round was that? Fourth. Fourth round. Yeah. Um, you, you seemed to, a little bit lighter on your feet than I've seen you. Yeah. Uh, like, like when he's putting the shots together. Yeah. And, and you looked like trimmer. Is, yeah. Was that all, uh, I know you, uh, Coogan interviewed you and spoke about it previously. Yeah. Was that all intentional going in for this particular fight or is it just an overall new outlook? It's just, just the result of a different style of training. Train hard, eat well. I always eat well anyway, but I've just, tra I've just trained properly for the first time in many years really. As far as roads with well done and cardio was concerned. So, the, the weight kind of fell off me. It was 18 pound lighter than my last fight. And after the uh, Eich and Tepper fight, I went, right, I need to bang a little bit of weight on so you all go heavier. And I was just carrying shite. It didn't work. Stuck around it that way for a bit. But I never actually got any stronger in correlation with the additional weight I put on. If you know what I mean. I was always even, I was, I was stronger when I was 17 stone, 17 and a half stone, about six years ago. So. It comes to a point the other week where we, we had a meeting. I had a meeting with John Mack, who's my trainer, his trainer and, and I said to him about this fight and he said, Well look, you need to be you need to be in the gym every single day. You need to see you there. I need to show you to show commitment. So I did done it and this was the result just, just in, in better condition and that was good going into it. You know, the worst thing is going into a fight unsure if you if you if you conditions are fine. I was only just getting warm then to be honest, just you know the fight was uh, you know, that was uh, coincidental, in, incidental, the fight that was always going to win. Because previously, um, with like previous coaches and strength conditioners, they've actually wanted you to put weight on, haven't they? Because I can remember that. And many people over the years tell me should have been heavier, yeah, but I am what I am. It's athleticism, you know, and I'm an Olympian who got to where I was through boxing skills, so why can I change it by going big and heavy and like, you know, slugging type of thing. But yeah, this, this, is, this is me from now on. Talk me through the stoppage. How did you see uh, Tom Little reacting and, 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 yeah. and the shots he was taking? I stunned him, and um, the much sparring I've done, I've never stunned him like that. It's 10 on scores. Yeah, and it's something we've been working on, actually. We're letting him work inside and then firing out, reacting, you know, he responds with me on the shots. Top of the head, wobbled and wobbled again. And, and it was gonna, it was gonna end up on the floor. And from a selfish point of view, because of, because I've got all the time away from him, I'm happy that I've stopped it when I did. Could have ended up a show deal knockout, which looked better for me. But from a selfish point of view, he, he's gutted because he wanted to be, you know, not stopped. Listen to the talk. Now he's gutted, than I feel for him, but it's selfish, selfish me, but. Uh, yeah, it's the right issue. There seems to be a, like, like a mixture to, from people ringside. Like some people are saying his reactions, the way he, his hands were up, he didn't look comfortable. He was sort of turning, and sometimes referees can see certain things which we can't, and the way he was reacting. So they're saying they're okay with it, but then you got a, uh, some people that aren't happy. Obviously, the crowd were booing. Yeah, the crowd, the crowd wanted to see him flat on his back. That's why. Right. And that's yeah. the reality of it. Yeah. yeah. That, that is, it's, it's the brutal reality of the sport. And now, then go on. Not concussed, and you know, and, and it's going to see his wife and kids. Fresh, really. Lost the fight, but he goes again and. Like I said, I'm looking at it from a selfish point of view because I didn't want to have any feel bad after the water to do that to Tom. Do you know what I mean? So, it is what it is and now you just have to crack on. Quite interesting seeing you um, mention Lucas Brown because you don't normally call out opponents, so to speak. Yeah. And this isn't me winding it up because you did call him out. There seemed to be a little yeah. bit of spite there when you called him out. Yeah, look, I've uh, seen a couple of comments even yeah, yeah, and I called him out on Twitter. Yeah. You know, I've seen him say you've got no heart, no chin or no stamina. I want him to come and test all of the other because I know for a fact I'll punch all of that fella. Perfect fight for me. You know, he, he, was, he was arranging a fight with Tom Little before the fight. So he was willing to fight Tom. Come and fight me, it's a bigger fight. Let's do it. And you mentioned previously to Coogan that 2019, is it that you want um, Brown? Did you mention uh, Dave Allen as well? I think a good little run of fights would be Lucas Brown. They're all good fights. Good Dave Allen, I'd like to rematch Christian Hammer, but 
As, as, as things move forward, things change all the time. An opportunity could come from yeah. nowhere. You just don't know, but, but that's in an ideal world. But the, the Lucas Brown is the one I want directly next. There's a show in Liverpool, 30th of March. I'm not promoted by Eddie Hearn, but I'd like to think he, he wants a, a big local head. He's going to want a name on it and every way to, to, the, to, to get homes on seats type of thing. And see, you know, people watching on TV as well, because it's still, it's still bringing um, you know, entertainment, drama, whatever else comes with it. I uh, personally, I think the Lucas Brown fight is good because yeah. um, it, it, people over here obviously are aware of Lucas Brown. Yeah, yeah, let him come back and, and you know remind people of what he really thinks he is instead of their last memory was him getting stretched out of the ring after the Dillian White fight. So he, he could have a chance to come back and you know refresh people's memories of what he's really about. And it's interesting what you say as well, like. You've got that planned out, or the 2019, but as you've seen with Povetkin, opportunities come up out the blue, don't they? Yeah, yeah. They do, but I said the other day, I'd rather be in, uh, you know, I'd, I'd rather look at a fight and see myself sit down with the team, look at a fight and say, right, this is 60 40, 70 30 in our favour, rather than taking one for more money, but it's in reality in the opponent's favour. And if we can, as much as we can do that as much as we can, look, it's not going to be easy because I'm not, in, I'm not in the strongest position. I've lost six times. You know, I'm not an unbeaten fight, I've got no promoter. But if we can try and play the numbers game a little bit, where the odds are stacked in our favour, I put the work in, in the gym. When the time does come for the big opportunity, I'll have a bit of momentum, you know, a bit of a win and run. I'm give myself a, the best opportunity to, to, to take the big one instead of just going in as a, as a big underdog and hoping for the best, you know. How do you feel with your career so far? Give me, sum it up for me. Um, You've got a smile so on your face, you know, Yeah, it's, it's, it, there was a massive amount of hype around me and, and that was thanks to Sky and Frank Maloney and that got people excited and people's hopes up and it ends up being you know, it's disappointing that I didn't go beyond the British title and Commonwealth title, and no more than no, no more disappointment than me. But you know, all said and done, I feel like my best is yet to come. It's just getting warming into that fight, just starting to feel my shots, you know, land properly, my knuckles digging into his face a little bit, and the longer it went on, I got my shots off better. You know, Tom, Tom was on the back foot, trying to be a bit tricky. Um, you know, but back to my career, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. But you know, I'm on the own stretch now. I think you know, I'll give myself till maybe 38 if even competing and still, still healthy. You know, I've started feeling like my reactions were going in the gym or in sparring. I'd, I'd call it a day. If it was a loss tonight, that would have been it, no doubt about it. But I didn't go in with that pressure on me because. Everything now is just kind of a bonus because 12, 18 months ago after the Christine Hammer fight, I I'd retired in my own mind and I was like, there's no way back. I got a fight in Essex this time last year against Kamal Sokolowski and like laboured to a punch point win. And I sat in the John Moore's University with Joe and Elliot the strength training on a, on a morning, on January morning and I said, look, I'm struggling with motivation and I'm I'm half thinking of throwing my hand in because I can't see where the next move is and, and it was, you know, it was hard. I'm running out of money, you know, I was like, I might just have to, to bite the bullet and go back to work type of thing. And then literally two two hours later, I got a call off NCK. Do you want to fight Pervekin? So I was like, let me sleep on it. And they put the phones on. I was like, what am I thinking here? And taking the fight, that's what I've been asking for. So, and since then, you know, I've had, I've had three fights this year, two losses, two two big fights, but this one was the one that was going to get me going again, and there we are, so we moved from here. What happened against uh, Sokonoski, your last opponent? Oh, Kuzman. Kuzman, Kuzman. sorry, Kuzman, yeah. The Kuzman fight, I come in, I come in at nine days' notice, I was due to fight on the Belfast show in uh, the 1st of October, which is two weeks later, but I, I went in the gym probably because I was struggling with a bit of a virus. So then we got off at the fight and I went into Joe and pleaded with him to let me take it for financial reasons. Um, he didn't want the fight. And he said, let's, let's see how we go and spar. I got Nathan Gorman's arm, we sparred six rounds. Good, you know, good move around, but I pulled, pulled my uh, bicep in it, and which, which caused more friction in the gym between us because he was like, look, we can't take this fight. But, you know, 
in the end, that to give me word that if, if the, the bicep was going to become a problem and it was going to start struggling, it was at his discretion whether he was going to pull the fight, avoid another, maybe another Pavekin type TV. You know, we were in with like a, a, a serious so called thingy, but then when I got in the ring, I was like, you bastards, and it, because if, if it was been in shape, that would have been an easy fight, let me tell you, it was nothing special at all. And then, but, but the reality of it was, I was still sick. Two, three weeks later, I would, I would never have made it to the Belfast show. So, in doing it, and a coach, because in, for me to take the fight, I said, well, if it, if it doesn't work out, I want to. I want match room to get me going again, and that was that tonight. So I negotiated it. It was kind of a no-brainer for someone who hasn't had a promoter. Yeah. But you know, um, sorry, you distracted there. Yeah, for, for someone who hasn't, who hasn't had a promoter, it was a no-brainer. But I found myself in a better position now, and hopefully, again, still no promoter. But as he as he ends, obviously going to be looking for content. Yeah. Heavyweight fights, shows in Liverpool, put pricey on it against a another, and there's loads out there now. So there's 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 big fights to be had. Because in that Kuzmin fight, a lot of people were thinking, is it the stamina? Is yeah. that why he retired? It wasn't the, uh, in that fight. It wasn't the the injury. It was an injury, but it was also lack of preparation. And well, it was was it a mixture of both? Or? I was starting to feel it, but that was at the coach's discretion. Right. Okay. You know, when we agreed this, um, but the injury, the injury definitely didn't help. Um, and what we didn't want to do was just completely tear the bicep and put yeah. yourself out for 12 months. Now, the Russians played a bit of a bit of a game with us, a bit of a like, oh yeah, we were out for your extra amount and then pulled the eyelash trick 10 days before and offered me more, too much to refuse. All right, I, I fell into the trap a little bit, but like I said, I don't regret it because we're here tonight because of it. Um, and what, you know, the, the, the outlook I was having was like, after the fight, I was disappointed. Part of me wanted to have been stretched out the ring rather than quit on me stool. Right. But then a week later I was like, you know what? Fucking forget about it because everyone else has. Everyone starts focusing on the next fight. Yeah. I, why, why carry it down with me? You know, and he pulled me out. I, he, as I kept going out until he said, and yeah. it, but it probably would have ended with me fucking shagged on the ropes, yeah. getting stopped and that, that's, that's the truth. Well, David, uh, how old do you know? You say 35? 43. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's <laughs> what I was saying. I'm calling Sokolowski Kowski. Kowski Sokolowski. Sokolowski. Yeah, I think, I think I need to retire, man. Sokolowski I'm getting is I'm getting an him. animal, by the way. We had, we had him in the gym sparring last week, Camille Sokolowski, and he is an absolute hard case. And he knocked with, uh, Nick Webb out last week, didn't he? Yeah. He's a fucking hard man, let me tell you. Well, a uh, lot of highs, a lot of emotions. I'm getting everything confused. It's time to retire me, I think. <laughs> Thanks for speaking to Wingy Box and IFL TV. And... Uh, you know, if people hate or don't hate, they're all interested in the journey. So that's a good thing, isn't it? It's great, yeah. You know, you can't please everyone, can you, in this life? And I stop caring about people's opinions a long time ago because I've had, I've had it all, haven't I? I've had all the stick in the world. But I'm still here, to still carrying on. Um, just got to, going to give it everything I can and hopefully get the rewards. Thanks for giving me so much time. Thanks for being to Wingy Box and IFL TV. Congratulations on the win, bro. Thank you.